Lady Esther presents the Screen Guild Players. The Lady Esther Screen Guild play tonight, Christmas in Connecticut. The starring players... This is Jane Wyman. This is Ronald Reagan. And this is Leon Velasco. Lady Esther presents the Screen Guild players in Warner Brothers' delightful comedy, Christmas in Connecticut. And our broadcast is dedicated to the 20th anniversary of Hawking Pictures, which is now being celebrated throughout the world. Our play stars Ronald Reagan as Jefferson Jones, Jane Wyman as Elizabeth Lane, and Leon Velasco as Felix. The Lady Esther Screen Guild players in Christmas in Connecticut. Smart Housekeeping Magazine this month. Such a wonderful article by Elizabeth Lane. That's the only way to raise a kid. Out in the country on a little farm. The kind that Elizabeth Lane writes about. To have a horse and cow like Elizabeth Lane. Oh, doesn't she make that farm sound heavenly? Gosh, those recipes by Elizabeth Lane. Boy, that's the kind of woman I'd like to know. Boy, that's the kind of woman I'd like to marry. Now, suppose that you were Elizabeth Lane. And suppose your writing was all a fraud. Recipe? You didn't even know how to boil water. And all the rest was fiction, too. You had no farm, no husband, no baby. You and your editor had just made them up. Well, now perhaps you'll know how I felt that day before Christmas when my editor dropped that bomb in my lap. Look, Liz, I suppose you know about Yardley. He's our publisher, your boss, and mine. He's the one who signs our checks. Anything else I ought to know? Well, he happens to be a stickler for the truth. If he finds out that we've been dreaming up all that junk you write, he'll fire us both. Well, why should he find out? Listen, some fool nurse at the sailor's hospital wrote to Yardley and asked him to have a wounded sailor out at your farm well, for I, Christmas. I think that's very nice. To... My farm? I haven't got a farm. I haven't even got a window box. You're telling me. Oh, Dad, what do we do? This is awful. You're conservative. It's even worse. Worse? Yes. Yardley likes the idea so much, he figures he'd like to go along, too. Well, I did what I always do when I'm in trouble. I went to Felix for lunch. Felix is Hungarian, but he cooks like an angel. And I steered the whole magazine crowd to his little cafe. So, naturally, he treated me like teacher's pet. And, as usual, he was at the door to meet me. Hello, Liska. Hello, darling. It's good to see you. Hello, Felix. Uh, he's waiting for you inside. Your friend, you know, that's the one I don't like so much. John Sloan? I didn't know he was coming into town today. Well, well, you have nice lunch, and then I think up a new recipe for you to write, yes? Yeah? Oh, don't bother, Felix. I may not need it. What's the matter? Something wrong? Oh, no. Just a catastrophe, that's all. Catastrophe? Is that good? It's horrible. Well, well you feel better when you go and eat. Go in, Liska. I, I fix you something very special. That's about the whole story, John. We who are about to be fired salute you. I wish I could feel badly about it, Elizabeth. Not that I don't sympathize, but, well, this morning on my way in from the farm, I was thinking that you ah. and I... Ah, here we are. Look, Liska, I select the order for myself. <laughs> Thank you, Felix. But first, some nice marinated herring and cream. You know, Elizabeth, sometimes these things happen for the best. Baloney? After all, there's a better job waiting for you, if you want it. The job of being Mrs. John Sloan. Horseradish? I know you're not sure. I know, but I'm, I'm willing to chance that. I'm certain you'll care for me in time. Nuts. Now, look here, uh, Felix. And walnuts, walnuts is pickled. He's excellent. Now I go and bring the rest. <laughs> Dear Felix, isn't he amusing? Elizabeth, you haven't answered me. Oh, I'm not sure, John. I am. You'll need someone to look after you. And you love the farm. I know from the way you write about it. What do you say? Well, my career's gone. And I guess I'll have to get married sometime, so... Oh, I mean... Elizabeth, darling. Excuse me, isn't this necking a little public? Hello, Dad. <laughs> I just told John I'd marry you. We'll live on my farm. Isn't it wonderful? Well, there are two ways of... Farm. Well, that's right. You have got a farm in Connecticut. Now, Dad, if you've got any ideas... But, Liz, it means my job, and it's such a cinch, too. If you're married tomorrow, Yardley can go. He can send me sailor. You'll have a husband, a farm. And what about a baby? Oh, I think I can help you there. Why, John! After all, I'm an architect, you know. When I planned the house, I thought of everything, including a nursery. 
And as it happens, there's a baby, too. Don't tell me prefabricated. No, no, it belongs to a neighbor who's doing war work. She uh, leaves the infant with my housekeeper. Say, husband, farm, and baby? Why, it's perfect. Not by a long shot. I still can't cook. Well, maybe you can, but Felix can. Felix? Don't you see, Liz? You just take him along. Oh, there was no stopping Doug when he went into high. The next thing I knew, it was Christmas morning, and I was up at the farm standing in the living room before the local judge. Now, this is the sort of thing I like. A simple wedding, lovely and dignified, and short enough to get me home for Christmas dinner. But just so we're quiet and don't wake the baby. Oh, well, we'll do the best we... Uh, baby! Uh, you'll have to hurry, Judge. We haven't much time. Apparently! <laughs> Dearly beloved, we are gathered in the side of... Police, Kaluk, already come scum, funny. The slave from the village must have brought someone. John, it's the sailor. He's here already. Two hours early. Oh, well, I'll go. You take the judge in the other room. Oh. Oh, well, just a minute. Uh, hello. Uh, hello. I'm Jefferson Jones from the sailor's hospital. Well, Merry Christmas, Mr. Jones. Uh, won't you come in? Thanks. Your mother invited me, uh, Elizabeth Lane. Oh, well, I'm Elizabeth Lane. It's my pen name. But really, in real life, I'm uh, Mrs. Sloan. Oh, I'm sorry. I sort of expected... I mean, uh... uh... Liska, why don't you ask him he should put down that placard? Oh, oh, of course. So stupid of me. Uh, Mr. Jones, this is my Uncle Felix. How to do? Liska, uh, this one I like. You see, see, he brings a big present. It's a uh, uh, sort of a rocking chair. <laughs> well, what do you know? A rocking chair. <laughs> Isn't that lovely? No uh, wonderful, Liska. <laughs> Just what you need. Uh, here, I'll, I'll take the paper off. I read in your column where you couldn't find one. I hope you like it. Oh, I'm sure I will. Uh, well, wait, let me try it. If you'll excuse me, ma'am, you're doing it wrong. Wrong? Yes, ma'am. My old man was an expert with a rocker. Solved all his problems that way. But he said you had to know how to rock. Well, don't you just rock? Oh, no. If you'd like me to show you. Oh, why not, Liska? Let him sit down. Thanks. Now, suppose you're tired and worried over a problem. Well, then you rock like this. Sort of slow and calm. Like you're on a ship on the open sea. And then you get to thinking slow and calm. Get it? That's the ocean rock. <laughs> Uncle Felix, isn't that wonderful? Mm -hmm, wonderful. And then there's that horseback rock. When you can't sit still, feel jittery. Gotta be doing something. And then there's the lazy rock. When you want something across the room and you're too lazy to get up and get it. See? Well, really. I never knew there was so much to a rocking chair. Mr. Jones, I... Lisa, what is that? For well, the baby, of course. The baby so quick? Well, he, uh, he he must have awakened early. Well, after all, it's 11 o'clock. I guess we both know what that means, ma'am. Do we? Sure. I read your schedule in the magazine. 11 o'clock, time for a bath. Oh, Oh, yes, a, a bath. Say, Mrs. Lane, do you mind if I watch? Watch? Oh, sure, those little fellas are awfully cute in the tub. <laughs> Say, it's not good to let them cry too hard, either. Oh, well, oh yes, that's right. Uh, well, come along. I think we'd uh, better get him up. <laughs> this I like, those two together. I, I like this very much. Felix, Felix, where's Elizabeth? Oh, she goes to wash the baby and Mr. Jones. I, I, I mean, he goes too. Well, I must say, this is very irregular. What am I going to tell the judge? Oh, I take care of the judge. I, I make him nice martini. Uh, maybe I make him two martini. <laughs> hey, sure got a pretty good pair of lungs. My husband's side of the family. Doesn't look like you at all. I guess he looks like your husband, huh? Oh, oh no. More like Mr. Sloan's aunt. <laughs> well, well, you see, Mr. Sloan's aunt is... I can uh, just about guess. <laughs> well, he'll stop crying once he's in his bath. Come on, we'd better get started. Oh, well, well, maybe I shouldn't bathe him today. It's, uh, it's rather cold. But you always bathe him every day. Isn't that what you wrote in the magazine? Is it? I mean, it is, of course. Now, let me fill the bath in that for you. 
<laughs> you see, he likes it. Gosh, you don't know what this means to me, Mrs. Sloan, to watch an expert like you give the baby a bath. Oh, uh, well, yes. Well, um, we might as well put him in. With his diapers on? Oh, oh no, no, of course not. I, I meant to... Oh, wait a minute. I'll test the water. Yep, just right. Oh, my, you, you seem to know a lot about bathing babies, Mr. Jones. Oh, I used to bathe the neighbor's kids. You did? Uh, helped me work my way through night school. Well, how would you like to uh, bathe this baby? You mean you'd let me? Oh, yes, of course. It's a relief to have someone else do it for a change. You know how it is, bathing him every day, week after week. It's, uh, it gets sort of monotonous. <laughs> Hey, this is going to be fun. Come on, Skipper. Up you come. <laughs> See there? He likes his Uncle Jeff. Oh, I'm sure he does. He, he couldn't help it. <laughs> All right. Here we go now. Off with your shirt. That's it. And now the rest. Say, Mrs. Sloan, you never told me his name. His name? Oh, oh, uh, we call him Robert. Oh, that's nice. And now we're all ready for... Robert? <laughs> oh, oh uh, a short for Roberta. <laughs> oh, I guess you were hoping for a boy, huh? I certainly was. Come on now, princess. In you go. <laughs> that a girl. You know, the way you handle her, Mr. Jones, really, you'd make a wonderful father. Um, you're not married, of course, by any chance? No, I guess the cards are stacked against me. Every time I meet a girl I like, it turns out she's already married. Oh, I couldn't hear you. What'd you say? Oh, nothing, just... Oh. Elizabeth. Oh, yes, John. Oh, Mr. Jones, that's my husband. Would you mind finishing up while I... Oh, uh... not at all. It's a pleasure. Go right ahead. Oh, thanks. Uh, you don't know what this means to me. Elizabeth, what were you doing in there? Just bathing the baby. At a time like this? Well, I thought she should look her best for the wedding. There isn't going to be any wedding. There isn't? Not this morning, at any rate. Oh, but what about the judge? Mr. Felix took care of him all right. His honor, the judge, just staggered home. The second act of the Lady Esther Screen Guild play will follow in a moment. Now, a word from Lady Esther. I'm going to make a statement now which will probably shock every woman who is listening. Some of America's outstanding skin specialists have told me this, and here it is. Rubbing the skin of your face can make it look older, faster than it should. And here is the reason why, they tell me, and I agree. Because the skin of your face is fragile, the most delicate skin of your entire body. Rubbing can stretch and break down the delicate underskin structure, can make even a firm skin flabbier and older looking than your age. But with Lady Esther Four Purpose Face Cream, there's no need for harmful rubbing. This famous cream is so soft, you just smooth it on gently, then wipe it off. That's all. It dissolves as it touches your skin, needs no help from your fingers. That's why you'll love the feel and the look of your skin after even one application of Lady Esther face cream. Without rubbing, Lady Esther four-purpose face cream cleans your skin, softens your skin, and helps nature refine the pores. And it also leaves a perfect base on which your powder clings longer and looks lovelier. Lady Esther four-purpose face cream asks no help from any other cream. You see, Lady Esther face cream contains one of the most beautifying ingredients known to modern science. 
This acts as an extra safeguard to help keep your skin soft, smooth, and young-looking. If you will try it, I'm very sure you'll want to use Lady Esther Four Purpose Face Cream always. Lady Esther presents the second act of Christmas in Connecticut, starring Jane Wyman, Leon Belasco, and Ronald Reagan. Well, the judge was gone and the wedding was put off. But it's funny, I couldn't make myself feel sorry. I guess Mr. Jones was to blame for that. He was tall and attractive, sort of like that movie actor Ronald Reagan. The way he looked at me, I I couldn't help but wonder. But I shook myself and told myself not to be a fool. And then when I'd settled down again, I forced myself to listen to John. What worries me, Elizabeth, Mr. Yardley might arrive at any moment. And you know what that would mean, of course. One more for breakfast. Elizabeth, he's your boss, your publisher. If he finds out you made up all those things you wrote, that you aren't even married. I know. And I don't care so much for myself. It's Dud Beecham. I wouldn't want him to lose his job. What do we do, John? Well, I talked to Judge Crothers on the phone. He's willing to come back tonight. Tonight? When all the others are asleep. Even if Mr. Yardley has already arrived, we can be married, and he'll never know the difference. Well, maybe he won't. Well, all right, John, if you think... Liska, 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 you will never guess. Guess what, Felix? Oh, just now I, I'm in the village, and somebody asks me who I am, and I say I'm your Uncle Felix. My dear chap, why get so excited about it? Excited? Who gets excited? Felix, please, 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 what's it all about? Liska, when they find out who you are, the famous Elizabeth Lane, and you come to live here, and there is a sailor here, too, a hero, well, they say you must come and be their guest tonight. Well, where at what? At the Christmas party, very formal, at the firehouse. The firehouse? Yeah, they say that you can come along, too. Hey? Of all the unadulterated, meddling now, fools. Now, Felix, you didn't say we'd be there. What else can I say? They, they are your neighbors. Suppose that Mr. Yardley arrives. Oh, that, that, that. Maybe, maybe he likes a little party, too. Oh, but John let his housekeeper go for Christmas. Who'll stay with the baby till her mother comes for? <laughs> Don't worry. I find somebody to stay. Who? Who, who? who can I find in a place like this? Me! <laughs> You're quite a dancer, Mr. Jones. Oh, I get around. Oh, I, I guess I should have gone into more training. I feel so funny, all sort of dizzy. Hey, we'd better get you outside. A little fresh air. Come on. You'll feel better in no time at all. Oh, I'm sure I will. It's lovely out here, isn't it? The moon and the snow. Sure is beautiful. I hate to think I'll be leaving tomorrow. Oh, so soon? I'm due back tomorrow night. But I'll never forget how nice you've been to me. Oh, I'm glad. Let's walk. In those shoes? Oh, that's right. They are sort of inadequate. I guess I was just kind of... Hey, wait. I got a better idea. How about this sleigh? Oh, we couldn't. Why not? It's just parked here. We'll just imagine we're riding. You know, it might be fun. Up you go now. There we are. Gee, this is wonderful. Fur robes and everything. Where will we go? For a magic ride to the land of every man. And every woman? Hey, that horse is moving. He wasn't tied up. <laughs> That's right, he wasn't. You want to get out? Not me. You want to get out? Not me. You know, speaking of marriage... Were we? Well, I guess... I was just talking out loud. I kind of got marriage on my mind these days. Me too. Really? Any special girl? Well, I'd say she's extra special. Oh. She lives in New York? Not exactly. You might say the country. On a farm. Well, yes. Jefferson Jones, are you flirting with me? No. Well, you know. Listen. We'd better go back. Look, Mrs. Sloan, your husband might not like this. Oh, he wouldn't know. He's left. Left? Well, he had to see Judge Crothers, a little uh, personal matter. Oh. And moments like these don't come very often. I mean, everything's so calm and still and 
the whole world to see. All I want to say is, let it sleep. Yeah, me too. I say, let it sleep. <laughs> Stop that confounded snoring. Wake up. I, sir, am Alexander Yardley. Who are you? Me? Oh, I am Uncle Felix, the nursemaid. Where's Mrs. Lane? Mrs. Sloan? Mr. Sloan? That sailor? Where's everybody? They all go to Christmas party in the village. Liska, I mean Elizabeth, she is guest of honor. Oh, they know her, do they? Well, I shouldn't wonder. The best magazine feature in America. So... This is the place I've read so much about. This is her farm, eh? Mm, this is the place you've read so much about. Tell me, what about the baby? What should I tell you? Don't you know about babies? <laughs> My good man, this is no ordinary baby. This is Elizabeth Lane's baby, the smart housekeeping baby. Tell me, could I see the little shaver? Just a quick look. I promise I won't disturb him a bit. Oh, all right. He's in this room. Mrs. You can see from here. Bet that he looks just like... He's gone! He's not there! Not there! You idiot! He's been kidnapped while you were snoring! But they were... Why any thief could have entered this house? I came in myself! Don't stand there, you fool! Where's the telephone? Oh, you... Now, Mr. Sloan, let me get this straight. You left the party to take care of a little business matter. When you returned, your wife was gone? Uh... Y yes, Mr. Yardley. One of the villagers said she'd ridden off in a sleigh with uh, Mr. Jones. Sailor. The man to whom we opened our hands. Our hearts. Our home. His home. His home. Be quiet, you! Mr. Sloan, have you any idea who might have kidnapped your baby? Well, no. I, I wouldn't know who'd kidnap him. And where can your wife have been all this time? I wouldn't know that either. I mean, uh... Oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. Here she comes now. Oh, Mr. Yardley. Yes, Mrs. Sloan, and I must say it's time you return from your gallivanting. I wasn't gallivanting. No, she just took me for a sleigh ride. <laughs> you, sir, I'll deal with you later. Mrs. Sloan, do you realize your baby has been kidnapped? Kidnapped? Taken from its warm little bed. Taken from this home. Oh, that. <laughs> well, really, there's no need to get excited. What? Of all the heartless, callous statements... Now, please, Mr. Yardley, you'll have a stroke. You! You dare to stand there and talk that way about the smart housekeeping baby? Do you realize what it's done for my circulation? No, but I know what it's done for mine. Now, Elizabeth, please. Don't please me, John. I've had enough of being told what to do. I'll do the talking for a while. Mr. Yardley, you may as well know the truth. John and I were never married. What? What? But uh, we, we really meant to, sir. It was... We just uh, never got around to it. You... You... You mean the smart housekeeping baby is... No! Is... No! That's what I've been trying to tell you. There isn't any baby. Anyway, not mine. No baby, no husband, no farm, no nothing. I made it all up. Made it all up? Why, I'd be the laughing stock of the country, of the world, of the universe. Young lady... You're fired. Well, okay, but you owe me two weeks' pay. And now, if it's all the same to you, I'm going to my room. I don't wish to talk anymore. Hey, wait a minute. To anyone. Oh, yeah? You mean to anyone but me. Come on. We're going to have a little conference alone. So that's the whole story, huh? On the level? On the level. And you're really not married? I'm as free as a bird. That's what you think. Come here. Miss <laughs> Miss <Damn. laughs> Liska, Liska, darling. Oh, Felix, go away. But, but, but this is important, Liska, from Mr. Yardley. Oh, all right, come in. Liska, Mr. Yardley asked me I should come and talk to you. About what? Well, just now comes a telegram from another magazine, American Housekeeping. They asked you to take a job. Double the salary. They did? Yeah. But when Mr. Yardley finds this out, oh, he begs you to stay with him. Also, 
double the salary. Oh, how did he find out? Well, he happened to see me open the telegram. You mean you opened Liska's telegram? <laughs> Not only I open it, I send it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jane Wyman and Ronald Reagan, for your excellent portrayals of Elizabeth and Jeff in Warner Brothers' Christmas in Connecticut. Say, incidentally, Ronnie, I understand uh, that this is the 20th anniversary of Talking Pictures. Yes, Truman, 20 years ago, the silent shadows of the screen found a voice. To say the screen found a voice is rather an understatement, I'd say. Well, you're right, Jane. It certainly wasn't as casual as that. The four Warner Brothers, Harry, Sam, Jack, and Albert, laid their last dollar on the line to make it possible. And with it went years of experimentation and heartbreak. The road which led to the perfection of sound pictures was a long and hard one. And speaking for all of us in the industry, I think it's entirely fitting to pause for a moment and pay tribute to the men who made modern motion pictures possible. Thank you again, Jane, Ronnie, and Leon, for appearing with us tonight. And now, before we tell you about next week's show, here's a word from one of America's best-known beauty authorities, Lady Esther. Suppose you had your choice between two face creams, and one jar said to you, you'll have to use a whole jar of me before you see any difference in your skin. But the other little jar said, you don't have to use a whole jar of me. No, you will see and feel a difference after just one application, which takes only ten seconds or so. This second jar is Lady Esther Four Purpose Face Cream, and you can easily prove what one application will do. Just smooth Lady Esther Four Purpose Face Cream on your skin. Then wipe it off. At once you will see and feel the difference, the new softness, the younger, cleaner, fresher look of your skin. Most important of all, you will find that Lady Esther Four Purpose Face Cream requires no rubbing or massaging. It's so soft, you just smooth it on and wipe it off. That's all. Now, why is that so important? Because the skin of your face is the most delicate skin of your entire body. Rubbing can stretch this fragile skin, can lead to slackness and the beginning of wrinkles. Without rubbing, Lady Esther Four Purpose Face Cream does the four things your skin needs for proper daily care. And this simple little experiment I have suggested will prove this to you. Not hours or days from now, but right now. Next week, the Lady Esther Screen Guild players will present The Devil and Miss Jones. It will star Donna Reed, Guy Kibbe, and Van Johnson. Be sure to listen, will you? Christmas in Connecticut was produced and directed by Bill Lawrence. The adaptation was by Harry Cronman. Jane Wyman can soon be seen in Night and Day, and Ronald Reagan will soon be seen in Stallion Road, both Warner Brothers productions. You save enough on the largest size jar of Lady Esther face cream to buy a box of Lady Esther face powder. So remember, ask for the largest size. Music on tonight's program was arranged and conducted by Wilbur Hatch. This is Truman Bradley speaking for Lady Esther. Thank you and good night. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>